So welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about productivity habits, how I manage my time in order to work smarter, not harder. And how I start is basically determine what's important to me. And during this time, I work on my highest return tasks. This is my prime time to work because my energy, attention, and focus is the best at this time to essentially bang out my most important and highest return tasks. And key is during this time, work on one task at a time and see it all the way through without distractions meaning during this time i do not check my phone i don't check my emails texts social media and of course i always have the impulse to reach for my phone but during this time i try to just fight that urge and i don't multitask because switching from one task to another actually requires our brains to basically recalibrate and refocus prime time window may look different for everyone depending on when you're the most focused and have the best energy so you may be a night owl so that might be your prime time so try figuring out when this is for you and then start by simply blocking out 30 minutes at a time and then adding more to this window that's essentially how i started something big that i'm working towards and if you have that too i know it can just feel so far away and like such a long journey ahead and sometimes i ask myself where do i even start I just try to simplify this process. I just reverse engineer that and break it into smaller steps. And one by one, I check them off. Now let's get into the system of things. At the top of the morning or the night before, I list down my top three priorities for the day. Some are work related, some are just life related like taxes. Focus on one task at a time and see it through. Set time blocks. When I set time blocks to work on something, I find that I work more intentionally focused and with a personal sense of urgency because I have to get it done within a certain window. You know when you're given a task and you have to get it done in one day, you'll get it done one day. But if you're given the same task and you're given a week, you'll get it done in a week. I find that so fascinating because if we have to get something done, we will, no matter what the time frame is. So this is something that I personally am really trying to work on right now because I'm self-employed and an entrepreneur. So essentially I build out my own days and schedule. How I construct my day and time is entirely up to me, which I am super grateful for every day. But with that said, I need to work diligently to get things done in a timely manner, but also spending enough time on the given task so I can execute the best results. Plan your day the night before or even week before. I use a daily planner along with a weekly planner so I can see what the week ahead looks like for me in terms of deadlines, schedules, and priorities. I also use my Google Calendar and iCal for appointments, lunch and dinner dates, workout classes, etc. The moment I make plans, it goes immediately into my calendar. I even have a joint calendar with Callan so we know each other's schedules. Taking the time for a self check-in, that also helps me to clear my head by externalizing things instead of internalizing them. Not only do we constantly have a running list of to-dos, but we're also constantly feeling plus having the inner dialogue or narrative or whatever that might be. So I've been doing therapy through BetterHelp for several months now and my therapist and I just work on how to navigate plus work past any mental blocks. This could be a mental block preventing me from reaching a specific professional goal or something that is just happening in my personal life that I just need to talk through and work out. I like that I can talk in a safe space and say whatever is on my mind without any judgment. And, and from what we've seen, I love building a plan. So whatever I'm going through, whether it be personal or professional, my therapist and I will work through it step by step to figure out what is the root of this feeling or problem and how do I work through this and past it. And having this kind of mental clarity just helps me to work more diligently and focused. Getting these things out of my head really helped me to keep a clear headspace to focus on other important things as well. And I love that I can talk to my therapist on BetterHelp from anywhere and it's usually in my comfy, cozy chair in my bedroom and I don't have to drive anywhere. There's an option of a video call or a voice call. And also there's an ongoing chat thread where I can just log in anytime and send a message to my therapist. The signup process is quite simple and can be done on either your phone or computer. Go to betterhelp.com, then answer a few questions and get matched with your licensed professional therapist within just 48 hours. And the service is available worldwide. Visit betterhelp.com slash LMVLaura. That's 
P-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P for 10% off your first month and join over a million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Is to say no. I love this one. So say no to low return tasks. Do the right things instead of doing more things. I just love this one because when you say yes to something, you're essentially saying no to something else. So when you say no to something that is low return, you say yes to working on something that's valuable, a greater ROI, return on investment. Being a full-time content creator, my inbox is flooded with emails and invites. And although, again, I'm so grateful for the invites and so happy that we're able to see each other in person again, I'm quite selective with what I say yes to. There's a long-term strategy of how and why I spend my time like this. It has to check one of these boxes for me. Is it beneficial for me to attend? Is this a brand that I truly admire and aligned with? Have I finished what I needed to in order to make time for this event? Or is it just worth it for me to go? Or can I be working on something else that will benefit my growth or time? And this is a big learning curve because at first it felt really uncomfortable saying no i never want to come off like i'm not grateful for these opportunities because i truly am but at the end of the day time is an investment so spend it wisely and really choose what's best for you and future you it's all about the roi for me turn off notifications eliminate the noise and distractions because distractions be everywhere and something is constantly trying to grab our attention especially with our phones because they are literally glued to our hips now or hands so take control of what you're working on versus the other way around and versus what other people are throwing your way i don't have notifications on for anything on my phone except for text messages and Willow's GPS so it basically tracks her location. I just love having it off because I can't pull my attention away anymore and my screen just isn't flooded all the time. Notifications pulls us away from something that we're doing and it's constantly firing off all hours of the day and it's usually not urgent, of course, with exceptions. I've adopted the mentality of working smarter, not harder. Before I would feel quote unquote, accomplished by working on menial, smaller return tasks because technically I was working and checking things off my list. So what I began to do is clump these and do the smaller tasks when my focus, attention, energy drop, which is around two to 3 p.m. in the afternoon for me. This is basically when I work on replying to texts, getting back to emails. Time is a major commodity. Time is something we cannot buy, it's finite. In unison, my energy is sacred because what I consume, how I spend my time, affects my outlooks, beliefs, perceptions, and even goals. It may sound dramatic, but you know, we are the collective qualities of the five people we surround ourselves with. Whether it's unintentional or intentional, I feel like we adapt qualities of the people we spend the most time with. So again, I'm mindful in a thoughtful way, not an ill-intended way, about who I'm spending quality time with. I feel like it's important to spend time with people who give you energy versus drain it. People you'd share your wildest dreams and goals with instead of just talking about other people. People who truly support you and raise you up. People that want the best for you and want to see you win. And of course, that feeling has to be reciprocated. And this also extends to what we're watching, consuming, like what we're doing on the internet. The internet is a black hole of infinite things. And I've totally fallen prey to that trap of the internet. On TikTok, I could just mindlessly scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, I mean, we're human, it happens to the best of us. But on those days when I've been clicking through pages, I feel like inevitably I find myself comparing and just it just doesn't feel good and i just feel awful at the end so it's just about being aware and catching myself if i catch myself doing that i ask myself is this helpful to me no then i put my phone down distract myself with something else usually it's playing like really loud fun music dua lipa is one of my go-to's i pull myself out of it and just have a little dance party and move my body delegate and work and hire the right people I know this isn't an option for everyone, but when you get to the point where you have means to delegate, this has been a super, super game changer for me. And don't get me wrong, this concept of delegating was a really hard one for me to adopt. For lack of better words, I am a control freak Virgo. Like, 
You know in high school when there'd be a group project and there was that one person that would do all the work? Yeah, that was me. I just liked it that way because I could control the outcome and let me tell you, at this point in my career, delegating is my favorite. Finding the right people who are pros in their field that can execute certain things better than I can is a game changer. For example, my managers are brilliant. They're female leaders in business and they negotiate my contracts incredibly well, game changer. Hiring talented editors for my videos that are great at storytelling plus can execute my content, game changer. Hiring a personal and executive assistant that can help me shoot, turn on content, again, help me work, take care of office and personal tasks, game changer. This really frees up my time to be focusing on the work that matters to me and something only I can do, plus building out my business. I read this notion in the productivity project and it resonated with me. Productivity is the difference between how much you do versus how much you accomplish. How much you accomplish is everything. I mean, just take that in for a sec. I used to think being, I'm doing air quotes right now, busy was being productive. But when I look back on it and when I was, again, air quotes, busy, running around from showroom appointment to appointment, attending things that I didn't have to, busy because I was just managing my time poorly. I love this one. It is to do it for future you. Fight through the friction and push through the urge to procrastinate and do it now so future you is good. I used to be the worst procrastinator of them all. I would cram for finals, like all-nighters, work on deadlines the night before and this is just not sustainable and it just adds a layer of anxiety that just ain't helping me so instead of working on something i needed to again i would start cleaning randomly start snacking but now since i'm more of a system in place about how i manage my time and priorities i find myself procrastinating less although i still will sometimes but again think about future you and do it for them did you know that resting is also productive I know I'm a hard worker that's always committed to my personal growth and success during the week, and that's what I'm focused on. But weekend Ellen, she is different. I allow myself to sleep in. I don't really keep myself on a schedule like this tight routine and schedule and morning routine. I feel like that kind of just goes kind of out the window. I spend really wonderful quality time with Kellen, friends and family, spend time in nature, paint, eat whatever I want, play, sometimes just do absolutely nothing. This time of rest, play and leisure are so vital to my productivity because come Monday, I'm ready to work. So make sure to carve that time out on the weekend or if you work on the weekend sometime during the week hopefully where you can recharge and do the little things in life that bring us joy and now to bring this video home the key is to work smarter more deliberately and more with purpose which makes it infinitely easier to become more productive and no, these are my tips for managing my time and tension and energy better, but it's also important to be kind and gentle to ourselves in this process because sometimes I know I can be so rigidly committed to my schedule. And when I don't follow up, I would just feel so guilty or just be so hard on myself. But you know what? Like you showed up today for yourself and you did your best and tomorrow is a whole brand new day to show up even better. So don't be too hard on yourself because you've come such a long way and the person you are today, if younger you saw you now, you would be so proud. So with that, thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you guys next time.